There was one character in Demon Slayer that fans wish they saw more of, Sabito. With his character debut in Season 1, we sadly realized that he died in the final selection exam, protecting Gyu. However, today we ask ourselves, what if Sabido never fell victim to the Hand Demon? How strong would a Hashira Sabido be since it was stated that he was stronger than Gyu in their training days? We will break down this video into three different scenarios of what could happen. So without further ado, let's get started. So for our first theory, what if Sabido didn't bite the dust during the final selection? Instead, he squashes the Hand Demon with a little help from his friends, ensuring all the up-and-coming Demon Slayers live to fight another day. This scenario poses that both Sabido and Gyu will become Hashiras and fight alongside one another. Moving on, Sabido crosses paths with our favorite brother-sister duo, Tanjiro and Nezuko. Initially, he's like, I might have to kill your sis, bro. But Nezuko's unmatched sibling love vibe just melt his tough exterior, so our masked warrior has a change of heart, offering Tanjiro a helpful roadmap to a mentor instead of a showdown. Now you may be asking yourself, how does Sabido being alive be any different than what Gyu did? Well, for one, Sabido's attitude compared to Gyu's, Gyu's is more nonchalant and Sabido is more open and engaging. Now the Natakuma Mountain arc begins. Who could forget, right? Sabido acting like the superhero he never got to be would swoop in with Gyu and kick some serious spider butt, thus saving Tanjiro and the gang. And, ah, uh, after this arc ends, let's not forget how Sabido doesn't just vanish into the mist but sticks around, becoming Tanjiro's mentor, guiding him like the ghost of demons slaying future. With this, not only will Tanjiro have mastered sun breathing, he would also know top tier water breathing. This plays a major role in the future due to Tanjiro training with both styles instead of relying on just one. During the intense Ashira meetings where they contemplate the fate of Nezuko, Sabido and Gyu bangs the table for justice and empathy. Well, metaphorically, because let's keep the furniture intact. His charm and firm belief in Nezuko sway the Hashira and they let her live. As the story unfolds, Sabido's presence sprinkles a magic easy does it dust over various battles. Tanjiro becomes mightier and quicker under Sabido's guidance, slicing through demons with newfound skills and even managing to keep his mentor safe through the battles. But hey, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Our champions still face brutal battles, lose precious friends, and experience hair breadth escapes. Yet with Sabido's wisdom, they fight love, lose, and march forward with their heads held high. Moving on, the story takes a familiar start with an attack on the Ubuyashiki estate and everyone is summoned to avenge and defend. But of course, disaster strikes. Sabido, with his eye wide, witnesses the mighty Muzan laying waste and quickly understands that this is no ordinary foe. Muzan doesn't go down easily and the Hashiras with their distinct breathing techniques have their work cut out for them. Now fast forward a bit through some edge of the seat fights, tear jerking deaths and an array of upper rank demons showing up like uninvited party crashers, our boy Sabido with Tanjiro and Gyu go head to head with Akaza. Tanjiro being his usual hardcore self manages to mess Akaza up quite a bit but not without facing some heart pounding moments himself. Now with Sabido in the picture, the Demon Slayers won't have that much trouble with the Upper Moon 3. On top of all this, Gyu, Tanjiro, and now Sabido will all have the Demon Slayer mark, which exponentially heightens their strength. The water-breathing Tipple Tag Team will probably use a 20th form or something. <laughs> Fast forward to the climax, the Demon Slayers square off against Muzan and things are just, let's say, insanely intense. Sabido tries to score the goal against Muzan, but Muzan's not going down without a show. The Slayers are struggling, people are getting knocked left and right, and just when we thought things were going pear-shaped, Tanjiro and Ko gain an upper hand. To wrap this up in a neat little bow, despite the uphill battle and the chaos that ensued, Muzan gets the exit ticket courtesy of the Demon Slayers, marking the dawn of a demon-free era. And our guy, Sabido, he was there, right in the thick of it all, making a difference that wasn't meant to be in the original plotline. With his help in this final battle, no Hashiras would end up perishing. Moving on with our second theory, what if Sabido not only becomes a hero during that intense final selection, but also nails the hand demon using his crazy cool 10th form technique? All kids survive, they become demon slayers, and Gyu, well, he's got his eyes on Sabido, admiring him but also green with envy. As time progresses, this jealousy keeps on growing because Sabido's nailing every mission and outshining him despite both being the water Hashira. But oh, let's hit the brakes and zoom into Tanjiro's life. It takes a dark twist. When Gyu finds him and Nezuko in the woods, he's not the kind savior he knew. 
Instead, he's stern and wicked, and against Tanjiro's cries, he kills Nezuko right there. Tanjiro, heartbroken, walks without purpose until, alas, he meets Muzan, who turns him into a demon. Now you may understand where I'm going with this. That's right, this story will be shifted towards Sabido and Giyu defeating the demons, with Tanjiro on the opposite side. Going back, Sabido and Giyu, our demon slaying duo, are kicking demon butts left and right, even eliminating Rui. Meanwhile, in the Infinity Castle, Muzan's fuming over the loss of the Lower Moons, but sees potential in Enmu and the demon Tanjiro, especially drawn to Tanjiro's iconic Hanafuda earrings. On the Infinity Train, poor Rengoku is solo with no Tanjiro and pals in sight. He battles Enmu and then a weary Rengoku is left facing Akaza, setting the stage for an electrifying one-on-one -on -one combat. Rengoku would eventually fall to Akaza after a heated battle while refusing the offer to turn into a demon. Akaza sinisterly devours the train passengers, amping up his own power. Rengoku's death hits like a tidal wave of sorrow through the Demon Slayer core, and Muzan? He's kinda okay with it. A dead Hashira and now even stronger Akaza, despite not finding the elusive blue spider lily. Simultaneously, Demon Tanjiro, haunted by Gyu killing Nezuko, becomes a terror, consuming humans left and right. His demon art? A lethal version of Nezuko's, making Muzan very, very happy. Elsewhere, Sabido and Tenjin Uzui storm the entertainment district, with Sabido taking down the fierce Daki. Even when her brother Gyotaro jumps in, the pair manage to wipe out Upper Rank 6 without major injuries. Muzan, though, is not a happy camper, losing Upper Moon 6, and he gives the remaining demons a harsh talk while promoting Tanjiro. Now Tanjiro, alongside some other mighty demons, is tearing through the Swordsmith Village. The clash that ensues when the Demon Slayers swoop in to defend it is nothing short of epic. In another part, young Muichiro faces off with Gyoko, resulting in a brutal but victorious battle for Muichiro. Giyu alongside Zenitsu, Inosuke, and Genya confront Hantengu and his tricky clones. And then the forest bursts into flames as Tanjiro, now a demon and fueled by a thirst for revenge against Giyu, descends with his demon art. As the fiery confrontation unfolds, Giyu, his kimono aflame, draws on memories of Sabido, propelling him to counter Tanjiro's furious assault. Despite a fierce struggle, Tanjiro's blood demon art triumphs and Giyu's life. Tragedy keeps rolling in, Muzan targets the Demon Slayer headquarters. Chaos erupts in Muzan's Infinity Fortress with heart-wrenching losses, like Zenitsu falling to Kaigaku and Shinobu absorbed by Doma. But not without wins like Kanawa and Inosuke overcoming Doma. In an unexpected twist, Akaza realizes the wrong he has done and allies with Sabido, united by a shared hatred for Muzan. The final showdown sees the Demon Slayers and, shockingly, Akaza battering a weakened Muzan in a city near the crumbling Infinity Fortress, even as the sun rises, reducing Muzan to ashes. The battle ends in victory, but at the cost of many lives. However, don't forget about Tanjiro. Now, this may beg the question, who's stopping Demon King Tanjiro? With his empty heart and hatred towards the Demon Slayers for killing his sister, he now holds an eternity of grudges towards them. Taking over Muzan's spot as the Demon King, Tanjiro now becomes the next and final boss. With Tanjiro's ability to withstand the sun, he may be the ultimate being. Now this may be a story for another time. Alright, so we've peeked into two scenarios, right? One where everything's all sunshine and rainbows, and the other where it's a complete horror show. Now let's ease into something a bit more grounded and chat about a theory that is most likely to occur. So Sabido. Yes, he slays the hand demon, but hold on. This time Gyu doesn't skulk away. Nope, he's right there helping Sabido make demon sushi. They train together, becoming not just buddies, but brotherly figures in each other's lives. Now as they get stronger, unlocking all those flashy sword skills, Sabido kind of becomes the MVP, rocketing into the top three strongest Ashira. And Gyu, no green-eyed monster here, he's thrilled for his friend, cheering from the sidelines. Then enters Tanjiro and Nezuko. Instead of slashing Nezuko, Sabido and Gyu go, wait, let's chat with the Demon Slayer head Honchos about this one. Off they go, making a convincing case, and voila, Nezuko gets a stay of execution. Then our dynamic duo, Sabido and Gyu, whisk Tanjiro to good old Sakonji for training montage that'll make any action movie proud. Moving on, our valid Sabido does manage to wipe out a bunch of demons, even some upper ranks. Yet, if you've noticed, Sabido's got this self-sacrificial streak. Recall him trying to save all those to be slayers in the final selection exam? Now, this is where things get interesting. Both Gyo and Sabido, as the famous water-breathing duo demon slayers, they would be well-known in the Demon Slayer core and even top contender of the strongest. With both using water-breathing, both of them can easily get stronger. 
Now the question we gotta ask ourselves is, how would they do against the Upper Moon Demons? If the Water Duo were to be in the Munzen Train instead of Rengoku for whatever reason, it would be a high probability of defeating Akaza. With two Hashiro level Demon Slayers there, they would be unleashing their Demon Slayer marks. The marks would definitely play a major part in the battle, and defeat the Upper Moon 3 with both lives in check. Now we switch gears to the Swordsmith arc where they are miraculously there to switch their blades. This would mean the Water Duo would be there instead of Moichiro and Mitsuri. Well, how about they face against Gyoko and Hantengu? Ding ding! The answer is without breaking a sweat. Gyoko would be light work for Gyu and Sabido could hold off Hantengu until help arrives. With this Water Duo on straight demon time, Hantengu and his five emotions would be no match, especially with the help of the Demon Slayer marks on their side. And of course, Tanjiro, Genya, and Nezuko would be there to assist. However, we now fast forward to face off with Muzan and I bet my last cookie, Sabido would throw himself into the fray to save Tanjiro or Gyu. I mean, come on now, this is Demon Slayer. There are bound to be some deaths in the series, and Sabido might just be one of them. But boom, seeing Muzan sends Tanjiro into a fit of pure, unbridled rage. He loses it and awakens his dormant powers. By seeing the actual breathing style from Yorichi himself through his visions, he notices the proper technique and style for performing the dance, including the correct wrist angles, footwork, and breathing rhythms. Gyo is not chilling either, he joins the battle royale, and together they form a tag team that even Muzan wouldn't see coming. Like in the original series, all the Hashira and the gang join forces into one last attack against the big bad boss. In an epic showdown with Muzan, the Demon Slayers finally come out victorious. Sabido might meet his end, but he does so by saving the very people capable of saving the world. And isn't that something? Your best pal saving you so that you can save everyone else. Hope you all enjoyed it, and don't forget to smash that like button. Until next time, peace.